Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. This is a reaction to what happens when a submarine implodes. I guess this is relating to what's happened recently, but this is a channel that I've reacted to loads and I've always been intrigued by the content that the channel makes. And I guess this is a lot more current, sort of around current events. But yeah, what really happens? Because I don't fully really know. I've heard people say like the thing, everything will just go in and you'll either be like, well, stabbed by the materials crushing in or just instantly dying because i mean the pressure's insane but i mean i guess it would depend if a submarine imploded but it wasn't in the in the depths that humans can't withstand i like maybe it'll go into those sorts of details i'm not sure but we're going to check this out and see and learn about what happens but yeah if you want to see some more of my reactions links are in the description to my patreon where you can find those but let's just check this out one of the scariest thoughts is to imagine yourself inside a submarine that's sinking uncontrollably. You'd likely know that given sufficient depth, the vessel will implode due to the increasing pressure exerted by the surrounding water. That said, I was shocked when I learned more about what actually happens when a submarine or any submersible reaches its maximum operating depth, also known as its crush depth. But how it's possible to estimate the depth of a submarine implosion based on the sound that it makes. Why it's highly unlikely to recover the bodies of those on board. How the crew of a sunken submarine were once rescued from the bottom of the ocean. And why no one, and I mean no one, has actually ever experienced the implosion of a submarine is not what you think. Oh. That's On November like. 15, 2017, the Argentinian submarine ARA San Juan disappeared a few hundred miles off the coast of Argentina. About a week later, a report was published by the Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty Organization. They claimed that they had detected a hydroacoustic anomaly about 30 nautical miles north of the sub's last known location. They found it location. a week after. The anomaly had happened a few hours after the submarine's last contact, and the assumption was that the acoustic signal had been produced by the collapse of the pressure hull of ARA San Juan. But the report also stated the depth at which the submarine hull had collapsed, and I was curious, how did they figure out the implosion depth, given that the collapse would have happened way before hitting the bottom of the ocean? During an underwater implosion or explosion, the gas bubble that's inside the structure oscillates, collapsing and expanding continuously before it dissipates. This is known as the bubble pulse effect. The frequency of the pulse can be measured acoustically, and since the volume of air inside the submarine is known, the depth of the collapse event can be calculated. In the case of ARA San Juan, the bubble pulse frequency was about 4.4 Hertz and the implosion depth was calculated to be at 1,275 feet underwater. The derived depth value can then be used to determine the energy required to produce the acoustically detected frequency at that depth. In this case, the energy released by the collapse was equal to the explosion of 12,500 pounds of TNT. The surrounding water pressure was 570 psi, and the submarine hull would have collapsed at over 1,500 miles per hour. That sounds terrifying, and yet no one has actually experienced it. Of course, many have tragically lost their lives in such accidents, but none of them would have had the time to feel or comprehend it. It could take anywhere. Oh, I thought the Argentina one, they were going to find it. Oh, God, I, maybe not. I, I was there thinking, oh, they're going to find out what. I mean, they found out what happened, but they were going to find them alive and it hadn't imploded. But no, damn. I had never heard about that before in my life. From 100 milliseconds to two seconds for the human brain to experience pain. That's because there is a delay for the sensation to reach the brain and also a delay for the brain to perceive it. With doll pains, like when you stub your toe, it could take about one second until you actually feel the pain. Yeah. But if you burn your fingers, your brain experiences that a lot faster, in hundreds of milliseconds. No need to try it at home, someone already has. Oh, god damn. Oh, I just burnt the f out of my hand. It was estimated Why would you do that? <laughs> One idiot. That, that the pressure hull of ARA San Juan was completely destroyed in about 40 milliseconds. Oh, wow. 
That's less than half the time for anyone on the submarine to consciously experience anything, including pain. That's, I mean, that's a positive you can take from it, I, just, I guess. I mean, it's obviously still awful, but... Even though the crew may have been aware that a collapse was imminent, they never experienced it as it was occurring. Their deaths would have been instantaneous. As for the bodies of those on board, they cannot really be recovered. The collapse of a submarine's pressure hull has some similarities to a diesel engine, in which the movement of the piston compresses the air and the diesel fuel in a short period of time. The extreme pressure causes diesel fuel to auto-ignite in the engine. Similarly, the air inside a sub could have fairly high concentrations of hydrocarbon vapors. Things like hydraulic oil, diesel oil from the auxiliary diesel engine, grease and rubber sublime to make their way into the submarine's atmosphere. When the hull collapses, it behaves somewhat like a very large piston on a very large diesel engine. The air can auto-ignite, and even if the air doesn't ignite, the extreme compression would make it extremely hot. The sheer force of the implosion, followed by the oscillations of the bubble pulse effect, will not leave any bodies behind to be recovered. Flipping hell. That said, there have been instances of people who've made it out of sunken submarines alive. Okay, so this is what you mentioned at the start. This is what I was thinking he was going to talk about the first, the, the one off Argentina, but he's talking about it now. How the hell are you going to escape this? I don't know if it would have been at the depths where humans couldn't withstand it, because if it was, then how would they get out? But I guess, I mean, we're going to see, but that is wild. For depth of up to 600 feet, special submarine escape immersion suits can protect the crew while they use an escape hatch or a torpedo tube to get out. Oh wow, a torpedo tube. Can they get shot off by the torpedo tube? Just give them a little boost at the start. The ascent from 600 feet will only take three to four minutes, but it's an extremely traumatic experience bet, involving man. panic, oxygen narcosis, and perforated eardrums. But things get much worse when the sub is too deep to use an escape suit. Your only chance of survival will be a submergence rescue vehicle, like the Russian Pris class vessel, a titanium hauled vehicle that can rescue up to 16 people at a time from a depth of up to 3,200 feet. Oh my days. Some submarines, like the Russian Typhoon class, are equipped with an escape pod, but their reliability in actual emergencies have been questionable at best. The rescue attempt of the Russian Kursk nuclear submarine involved several submergence rescue vehicles, but unfortunately the mission failed due to the inability of the press vehicle to dock onto the stranded submarine. These complications are what makes the rescue of the crew of USS Squalus a near miracle. In May of 1939, on her 19th test dive, USS Squalus submerged. But due to a malfunction, the main air induction valve opened when Squalus was 60 feet underwater. This caused the flooding of the aft torpedo room, both engine rooms and the crew's quarters, sinking the submarine to the bottom of the ocean. Those who were in the sealed compartments had enough air to breathe for 48 hours at best. Cut off from outside communications, the crew released a buoy from the deck which had a telephone attached to it in the hopes that the rescue team would find it. And now all they could do was to keep calm and wait. Is this footage from inside? How the hell has he found footage from inside this? Wow. No rescue attempt of sunken submarines had ever succeeded beyond 40 feet. And the crew of Squalus were sitting on the ocean floor 243 feet below the surface. Oh my days. Sometime later, the buoy was spotted by their sister boat, Sculpin. The two commanders were able to exchange a couple of words, but an ocean swell caused the line to snap. No more communication was possible. Within 24 hours, rescue ships had arrived and they had an experimental device to deploy. It was a rescue bell. A hard hat diver had to first get ready and descend to carry a downhaul cable from a winch inside the rescue bell. Wow. Once the cable was connected to the sun, what a horrible job this would be. Up the bell was lowered into the water 
and then placed exactly above the hatch of the sunken submarine. Stranded at the bottom of the ocean, the crew of USS Squalus was thrilled to greet the rescuers. Seven sailors climbed into the bell and were then brought up to surface. Three more trips had to be completed before all 33 men were rescued. Flipping hell, that is insane. But the US Navy spent another 113 days salvaging the submarine itself. There were bodies in the sub that still needed to be recovered. The plan was to attach pontoons to the hull of the submarine in order to raise it off the ocean floor and then transport it back to port. To do so, pontoons had to be first filled with water to create negative buoyancy and descend into the water. Once attached to the sub, air was pumped into the pontoons which pushed the water out, making the pontoons buoyant. During the first attempt, the pontoons attached to the bow raised too quickly, causing the bow to rise out of the water and slip out of the cables. Eventually, USS Squalus was towed back to port on September 13, 1939. 25 bodies were recovered from the wreckage. The body of the 26th victim was never found. Oh, man. In less than a year, Squalus was repaired and recommissioned under... They repaired it? Oh my... And they, they've reused it after this? Flipping hell. ...the name USS Sailfish, which served during World War II. Wow. The crew were forbidden from uttering the word Squalus while on board the Sailfish. After decommissioning in 1945, the conning tower was cut away and placed in a park at Portsmouth Naval Shipyard, where memorial ceremonies are conducted in May of each year. In case of the Titan submersible, which was lost on June 18, 2023, when attempting to visit the wreck of RMS Titanic, the depth at which the implosion happened was nearly 10 times more than that of ARA San Juan, meaning the water pressure was 10 times more at the time of the accident. We'll never know what the crew of five on board Titan went through in their last moments but it's entirely possible that their final thoughts were joyful and exhilarating and not tainted at all by the horror of what was about to happen a few milliseconds later. Damn, I mean, that's probably what you'd hope. It is dark no matter which way you think about it, but that is what you'd hope for, right? No sense of fear or whatever. What a horrible way to go. When I was in boot camp, one of the instructors was asked, because of the benefits, why didn't he join the submarine service? His answer, there is a new, there is a natural law that what goes up must come down. There is no law that says that what goes down has to come back up. Crazy to think that, that, that a submarine that actually has been involved in such instant got repaired. That's what I'm thinking. That's, that's insane. I think we all know where this idea came from. Yeah. It's just how it is, right? But um, there we go. I just a, a bigger in-depth look into what would happen and what does happen when a submarine implodes. And it is brutal, but to be honest, probably better to go out like this instead of having to wait around and just suffocate to death or whatever. But yeah, this is wild. And yeah, the more you know. But if you want to see some more reactions like this, let me know in the comments. And until next time, peace.